pleasure to welcome Dr. Amy Bucher to the stage. Thank you so much, James. Um, I really appreciate that introduction. And, um, you know, in the, in the spirit of honesty and disclosure, I also, at the time that I initially wrote my post, was struggling and was searching through my own professional expertise for ways to gather some strength, especially knowing that major social change is much more a marathon than a sprint. So um, I'll skip the agenda. You'll all get these slides later. Um, it's a very brief presentation. But why do we need to worry about sustaining change? Show social movements work, we know they work, but they take time and they take energy. People really struggle to change their old habits and that's especially true if they don't see an immediate benefit, but they do feel an immediate sacrifice. So this is an effort we know takes a lot of work. And I have a personal example of this. I grew up in uh, Somerville, Massachusetts. It's just north of Boston, major urban area. And when I was a young teen in the early 90s, my father worked for the city and he was part of establishing the city's very first recycling program. So my first volunteer position ever was working with my dad and his office to help hand out blue recycling bins to all of the city residents. And that was how um, we first got started in Somerville. What you see on the screen today are some shots of what that has become over the last 25 years. So initially it was a, a really rudimentary recycling program. It really wasn't something that had been rolled out on a large citywide scale um, in Massachusetts that I'm aware of. But today Somerville is a zero, citywide zero sort initiative. You can put any sort of recyclable good into the same container and it gets to the right place. Somerville has also established an office of sustainability and environment and they have a goal to become carbon neutral by 2050. If you check out their site, um, their Office of Sustainability and Environment site, you'll see that they're doing some really incredible work in this area, and I think are probably leaders in the United States with sustainability efforts. And so I look at this and I feel really proud that this, the little work that I did way back when, in some small way, contributed to what I feel is a major effort and major progress. And I, I draw hope from examples like this that show that everybody's tiny efforts over time eventually add up into something meaningful. Another way to think about sustaining change is through the concept of willpower. Um, people often talk about willpower as something that you either have or you don't. So some people may be tough enough to grab the apple instead of the donut and other people are not. But research actually shows that willpower is more like a muscle. It's a renewable resource that gets tired when we work it really hard for long periods of time. But it's also something that we can make stronger with strategic exercise and rest. So we need to think about making changes in the world over a long period of time, like building muscles. So we're building our willpower and then spending it wisely where we can make the most difference. So these psychology-based tips I'm sharing are all in the service of exercising your willpower and then giving it the rest that it needs so that it can grow stronger. I'm creating a plan. And this is, uh, you know, if you think about with the election or even with something smaller such as sustainability, there are so many specific issues that people care about. And it can become overwhelming if you try to tackle them all. So it becomes really important to narrow down that focus. And what I would recommend in that case is that you really look at the intersection of what is the highest priority to you, where are your passions, and where are your talents. And where that overlap lies is probably where you can make your best contribution. And it's important to think of yourself as part of a larger tapestry of people who are tackling other issues as well. So just by narrowing your focus, it doesn't mean that you're not doing everything you should be. It means you're doing your best work in the areas where your talents lie. There's also really interesting research with respect to willpower and plans that shows that drawing out a plan and especially contingencies for when things get hard can really help you stay on course when there are obstacles. If you think about how we make decisions, um, that's a very time-consuming, very cognitive processing activity. So if you have a plan in place ahead of time and then you hit an obstacle, you don't need to make decisions. All you need to do is execute the plan that you created at a different period of time when you weren't stressed. So think about things that may go wrong in your efforts toward sustainability or toward other change and how you'll cope with those. And then if they do happen, you're better equipped to deal with them effectively. The next one is about breaking goals into milestones. And again, this is really related to this idea that we can become overwhelmed when we're trying to make major changes in the world. Um, some of the most influential people in our society didn't actually even live to see the changes that their work eventually affected, um, which sounds like it's depressing, but I don't mean it to be depressing. I, I mean it to 
focus you more on the short term because that's where we can see the difference. So the idea is to break down your dream into specific action steps. So think about not just your major wins, but the milestones that it will take to get you there. And doing this not only helps you feel like you're making progress, but it builds a really important um, psychological resource called self-efficacy, which is our belief in our own abilities. And there is so much research across so many different domains of behavior um, that shows that having self-efficacy is a powerful predictor of success. So the more you can do to check off boxes of small accomplishments, the more likely you are to succeed with those major wins. The third one I called enlisting your army, and I like using the military terminology here because I think it, um, it gives a sense of strength and support when we may really feel like we need that. This involves vocalizing your intentions so that you feel a sense of commitment. When you say that you're going to do something, it becomes much harder for you not to follow through because you start to feel the sense of obligation to the people who've heard your promises. And then if your friends share the same concerns you do, that also gives you an opportunity to enlist them to work alongside you and really become your allies in making change. So I recommend stating your plans publicly, depending on um, you know, your work environment and the types of networks you have. Social media may be a vehicle for this. It may be something you do more in person with your friends or in your workplace or in your professional life. But find the way that works best and then be public about the things that you care about. Um, work along those like-minded friends. Find your people and get them to work with you. And then the third one is really more along the idea of resting your, your willpower muscles so that it can grow strong. And that's about taking time for social support, just enjoying your friends, enjoying your loved ones, and recovering from the hard work that takes place sometimes out in the world. This one is I call take responsibility. And what I'm really referring to here is um, a classic social psychology finding called the bystander effect. It's this idea that um, sometimes people who want to do the right thing, who believe in doing the right thing, end up doing nothing because they believe that other people are taking care of it. So, um, you know, the classic example is you hear somebody's cry for help and you don't call the police because you assume someone else has. And unfortunately, many times, that means that nobody actually takes responsibility. So my advice to all of us, um, you know, including myself here, is that when you think something needs to be done, speak up about it. Uh, be the one to take those first steps. Oftentimes, I think that once you make it visible that you care about an issue, that you are enacting change, that's when you start to get other people helping you out. Um, the very worst case scenario, if you're the one who speaks up and takes responsibility, is that there's some redundancy, that maybe your efforts are duplicated, and hopefully that only to happens for a short period of time until you and others who are working on the same issues become aware of each other and can join forces. Uh, but it is really critical, I think, when you're trying to make change to avoid this bystander effect and to um, put the responsibility on yourself to be the one to speak up and to act. And then the last one is taking care of yourself. This again, really, willpower is a muscle, and if you've ever um, you know, tried working out or strength training, you know that without recovery, you're not going to be successful in those goals. It's the same with your, psych your psychological self. So take care of your body and your mind. Um, you know, eat well. It's very hard sometimes in um, times of stress not to eat emotionally or to forget to eat because you're distracted. So try to avoid those sorts of things. Keep healthy, nourishing food around. Um, make time for regular physical activity, even if it's just um, breaking up your day with a walk outside and enjoying um, fresh air. Bundle up if you live around Boston like I do. Um, keep reasonable sleep hours. Sleep is so important for maintaining stress balance, um, for maintaining our physical health. And take time to indulge in your favorite hobbies. Sometimes when people are involved in activism, um, there's this perception that you should be spending all of your time on these very important activities, and watching TV or reading a novel is frivolous. It's not. It's really important that you give yourself these breaks so that you can be at your strongest when you are back at it, when you're back out there in the fray fighting for the causes that you believe in. So think of these things as a recovery opportunity and know that they are as critical as the hard work that you do in other times. So I want to close by, by flipping the message that I started with around social movements. Social movements take time and energy, but they work. There are so many examples um, throughout history and throughout modern day of major efforts that took so many years of struggle. Um, broadly and then sustainability in UX more narrowly 
are really critical to the, the future of our earth and our society. And I really believe that this is a movement that can and will change the world. So it's hard work, but keep at it because it matters. And so with that, um, as James said, I have the pleasure of introducing our next speaker, B. Cordelia Yu. You may remember Cordelia from last year's Sustainable UX event, where they talked about building a more holistic view of sustainability. Their talk was one of the most popular sessions last year, and I believe we'll probably be just as delighted this year. Um, so please welcome B. Cordelia Yu. <laughs> 